Hello, uh, welcome to today's class. Today we will talk about uh, modeling transformation. So these are the uh, today's class objective. You need to understand the, uh, you need to know the, the, class, the, the uh, classic data processing stuff, uh, which is known as the rendering pipeline or rendering primitive. Also, the, we, we, uh, we typically use triangle as uh, this uh, uh, rendering primitive. And then also I wish that you can understand the 3D translation, also the 3D rotation. So last time we talked about the difference between the, the point and vectors, and then to uh, uh, to see that to specify that actually we uh, talk about the, the frame also the uh, transfor uh, transformation in the local and global frame. Uh, before we move uh, move on to the uh, today lecture uh, material, I went over to some of your questions. Actually, there here are two uh, questions that your fellow student had. Uh, one is that he or she thinks that the FPS of animation cannot be controlled when um, we are using the idle-based animation. That that's true. So basically, the idle-based animation that we talked about last time is that once the CPU is actually idle, we actually generate event so that we can call the, this idle corresponding the callback function. And then uh, basically, the, uh, uh, there's no mechanism that we can control the, uh, this, the, uh, this the, uh, uh, particular FPS. You know, the, typically, the, some of the games should provide, you know, the, uh, for uh, providing animation, we need to provide the, the uh, regularly provide this 30 uh, frame per second, right? So obviously, the idle based approach that we talked about last time is not, uh, there's no way uh, we, we can guarantee uh, such a property. So I just mentioned the idle based animation, it's, it's uh, one of the very simple approach, so actually, based on that, I can talk about some animation, that's why I introduced this one. But the typically for uh, also he or she asked that how can he implement animation so that we can control FPS, right? So typically the, we can also measure the, the, the time between the uh, when he perform certain task, right? So based on that actually we can we know how much time we spend and then based on that based on that we uh, we can we know that how much time we can spend more for the default following task or not. Based on that, we can we, we can kind of manually adjust the, this, the time that we can spend for generating each frame. That way, we can also think about FPS. So there could be the many other approach to do that. If you're interested, I recommend you to look in, into the uh, this issue. Also, some of you asked that why we use the uh, some buffer to make the animation, right? So the uh, uh, last time when we talked about the idle based approach, we used actually double buffer, right? So we used the two different buffer uh, as a, uh, the color buffers, right? So uh, that's also very useful for uh, generating animation. But I, I think that there, uh, I already mentioned this one, but I think this is important. I'd like to talk about it again. So if you are just using the only one uh, buffer, right? As we did in the uh, K1, then you can see that actually the you can see the the the, the visualizing process of the uh, drawing the this the uh, our this uh, 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 Julia set point, right? So you can see that at a given point there's some uh, at the Julia set we only had one buffer, right? There should be some sort of our monitor or some other one, right? And then this monitor has its own refresh rate. Uh, let's say the thirty frame per second. Then actually the uh, if we actually have a 30 frame per second, then it actually access the color buffer for every 30 milliseconds, something like that, and then uh, visualize this content to our the monitor, right? But the, our Julia says sometimes the drawing it is very slow, right? Sometimes actually we drawing some pixel the, from here to there, right? We draw one pixel, one pixel, one pixel. As on one point we showing this one, and then uh, after another 30, 30, 30 frame per second, uh, 30, 30 milliseconds we draw the only a few pixels. And we are showing this one, right? So uh, sometimes this might be desirable, but the, uh, it's, it, usually it's not desirable, right? So that's why we use two buffer, right? So here, suppose we, we don't want to we don't want to show the this the drawing process, then uh, initial uh, we actually after this the, we use the two buffer here, and then initially we set the, this buffer to be visualized for the, the, our this uh, display monitor, right? Initially, there's nothing there. Maybe the we initialize this uh, content with the blue color, right? And then at that time, we, we keep drawing, right? We keep drawing. It might take even uh, a few seconds, right? But nonetheless, actually, we are, uh, we, the user can see the, only this content, right? But once we are done on uh, filling up this buffer, then we saw buffers, right? And then it means that uh, now we let the, uh, our display monitor to visualize this content, right? And then, uh, and then, then we actually we work with the 
uh, when you're drawing the next frame of the our Julia step, we actually the drawing picture here, right? And then while we are drawing this one, we keep showing the this content, right? So the, that's that's one of the main reasons why we are in the double double buffer. And then also the uh, especially when you have animation, this one is might be the obviously the using double buffer much better since we don't we don't show the this the, this uh, uh, drawing process, right? Obviously, the ideally we need to. Uh, we need to actually uh, reduce down the, the time that we spend the, uh, drawing each frame, right? But they're, uh, actually, they're typically be using the, this kind of double buffer uh, uh, scheme. So that's why actually, I, I, I hope that uh, you can understand the, why we use the, this the double buffer to make that, uh, to make the animation or the virtually they're, a lot, they're actually using double buffer is kind of the norm and kind of the standard uh, as a uh, graphics application. Okay, so the, today these are the out outlines. So there, I will just, we talked about the different, recently we talked about different transformation. So I'd like to talk about the, the, what we are doing in the, the overall context. So I will uh, briefly talk about the rendering pipeline, and then I will move on to the actually modeling transformation. Then later on, probably we'll talk about some other transformation, viewing and trans, uh, uh, projection, which are also the a different type of the trans transformation. So there, here I just briefly showed the, some of the classical, uh, classic rendering pipeline with the different modules, right? And initially, the, we, uh, the, we actually, the input of this rendering pipeline is the, the uh, rendering primitive. Typically, you can treat that as actually the triangle. We actually provide the vertex or triangle information to there, right? So that's why when you use OpenGL, we, you, we just use the, if you remember the PA1 uh, of some other example that I took with the class, uh, we just, I just used the, this, the, so we use the GL, begin, and GLN, right? And then over there we, use, we specify some of vertex, right? With the, some of the this, uh, some of the way of the connecting these vertices with the triangle, right? So nothing but initially OpenGL provided this high level API, right? Basically here we specify that this triangle vertices, right? That's the input to the, our rendering pipeline, and then at the end of the uh, this application we see the kind of the the uh, uh, pixel, right? Kind of color, color information at the this frame buffer, right? So basically, the end uh, output of the, this class render pipeline is a pixel that comes out of in the display at the uh, at the bottom here, and then in the middle actually there could be the main different actually the steps. So those are the that consist of the render pipeline. We'll actually talk about those ones here one by one, and typically once we once we specify the sum of the vertex triangle. It starts with a series of model defined with the modeling spaces, right? I mean, there, suppose that you want to the, uh, draw the, this, the, the car, right? And each individual object uh, defined in, uh, define in each own, uh, uh, define each own this modeling space. That's the kind of the modeling spaces, also the modeling frame, right? And then based on that, we do the actual transform some of the model into the, each, uh, uh, in a particular position oriented in, the, uh, in our world, right? That's actually the uh, uh, that's uh, talk about this uh, modeling transformation, which somehow transform each object which are defined in each own model space into the world, right? And uh, then everything is actually defined in the this kind of world known as the world space. And then all the all the other information, all the objects like uh, light source. I mean, there to visualize to illuminate something, they should they got to some some of the light source. Also the camera, right? We need to define everything in the world space in here, right? Uh, and to do that, actually, through the modeling, again, modeling transformation starts from the each individual object defined defined in each own the model. Uh, for example, for the cow, say you might define each own model space like this, and then I, I uh, uh, <laughs> sorry about my drawing. <laughs> Let's say this is the cow. <laughs> Sorry about it. And then uh, basically, th this is defined in each model space, right? And then we transform into this kind of world, right? That's actually modeling transformation. And then uh, sometimes actually we can do the trivial rejection. And, uh, we know that actually the, here we put the sum of camera here, right? But the, if the sum of the, o uh, the sum of object located the, you know, the far behind the camera, then I guess we cannot see it, right? So that way we can perform some, so we can trivially identify such object. We can reject them, right? So actually, this kind of optimization to accelerate the rendering performance, and also the uh, once they are light, we can actually illuminate the potentially visible the object, right? So you know, that actually, depending on the uh, 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 let's say actually the here, 
uh, we put the light source on uh, 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 here, right? And then we might gather a lot of energy light source, and then it looks my, uh, it looks more uh, much more brighter. The other case where actually we we gather this light source in the uh, 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 in a very uh, uh, in a very skewed direction, right? So I uh, just depending on the configuration between the this the triangle also light source, some of them uh, looks much brighter, right? Uh, to compute the actual that kind of color, uh, that process done uh, is done by this illumination. You know, the final rendered color is determined by the several factors like object orientation, material property, and light source uh, light sources in the scene. We will talk about uh, later on in the in the part of this uh, illumination. And then uh, I mentioned everything defined already in the world space, right? Uh, but we defined our camera here, right? Ideally, this camera does nothing but we need to visualize, we need to render, the rasterize everything in the, this, the, in our this screen space, right? So suppose that this is our the camera space, right? Something like that. And then we want to basically here now we, uh, we can see that each pixel here in, in the color of right? And then we somehow we need to transform those coordinate defined the world space into the this viewing space, right? That's why, uh, you know, the basically the, we wanted to do some of transformation uh, that's known as the viewing transformation onto the each coordinate here. So that uh, for this one, we want to know the what are the coordinate in the in the this camera space that we we try to answer uh, that we try to answer the uh, in, in the prior class. That's actually the viewing transformation. Uh, uh, here, basically, the, if you do the if you do the uh, perform the viewing trans viewing transformation on the this the world coordinate. You actually get this kind of image, right? To actually there, to do that, we specify the view volume, uh, known as this viewing cross-up. You can see it actually there, uh, these are some of the visualizing this uh, viewing uh, viewing this cross-up, and then sometimes some of the object actually the align uh, in other uh, span with the, this view, uh, view volume. For example, suppose that some of the triangle actually the uh, located there, some portion of the within the, this viewing space, some other one outside of viewing space, right? To do that, we need to clip. We clip this one, and then we actually uh, remove the, this portion, right? We, want, we need to only to visualize the, uh, this part. That's the knowledge clip. And then project is that everything defined in the, the 3D, right? But we need to project them into this only the 2D space here, the, the uh, viewing space. So uh, those uh, process also there need to be done in the random pipeline known as clipping and projection. And then, uh, and then after the projection, then each vertex of the triangle may be the map into the particular location into this 2D buffer here, actually, right? And then uh, here I'm visualizing the center of each pixel. Then for each center of pixel, I, we can actually can compute the color, right? So for example, uh, uh, in this uh, kind of the light blue the triangle, we can use the, this light blue over there, right? Uh, we, uh, if the, the pixel center is located in, uh, within the, this triangle. That's the known as actually rasterization. Rasterization is nothing but convert the triangle into the this the pixel pixel information. Uh, uh, specifically, we need computer the color information or the depth information for each pixel center. Those operations are actually the uh, 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 basically the uh, kind of part of the each rendering pipeline. And through the this the rendering pipeline, you can see that a lot of the actual steps in here actually involve or kind of the change of the coordinate, right? Some other, uh, we change the, the modeling space into walls, walls, the viewing space, and so on, right? So that's why actually the transformations, actually the kind of the central operation to the, uh, also the computer graphics, also the, uh, it basically the transformation, nothing but matrix vector uh, operations, right? Uh, also, you can see that when you actually transform uh, each vertex here, uh, basically, the transformation of each uh, this vertex uh, do not have any dependence with the another transformation to another another vertex, right? So it means that everything can be done in a parallel way. That's why early on graphical processing unit GPU designed a uh, uh, design in a way to have the uh, many parallel core, so that we can we can process the uh, uh, each vertex here. For example, to draw some uh, to uh, to draw I mean the typical scene texture, you know, a lot of triangles, right? Maybe the texture ten thousand or the one hundred thousand triangles, right? So actually we need that they could be a lot of vertices and then we need to perform this kind of operation for each every the single vertex. And then every uh, those process can be done in a uh, parallel way. That's why we actually think about it, what other what are the architecture to uh, realize that in a real time. 
That's the one of the motivation, uh, uh, one of the actual direction that we designed the GPU over the, the time. Here, also I'm showing the, some of the architecture illustration of the some of the recent GPU. Uh, of course, there could be the more recent one, but you can you can see that you can you can actually the you can see that actually a lot of recent one actually the uh, 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 based on this kind of concept. Basically, there are you can see that this little uh, this green uh, green rectangle is kind of core, uh, so that we can perform the matrix vector operations. And then since we need to do the, a lot of operations in a parallel way, we need to obviously of course we need to gather some data, right? So there should be wide memory bandwidth. We should gather the, a lot of data from the, the, some of the GPU DRAM to the, this the, uh, parallel core. And then uh, also the, initially, we, for the GPU main design to support, to support this kind of rendering pipeline, which is kind of fixed, fixed uh, operation, right? But there, uh, there has been the uh, uh, development, uh, we can actually the, even program of the, this the rendering pipeline. Here, the, I'm, uh, in this class, I may talk about some of the main components of the uh, rendering pipeline, but actually the recent, recent technique is that allow us to even program some of each steps. So that actually, the, uh, on top of that, we can even the, support the, this CUDA, which can the, support the general language. So the, even actually, the, uh, in some case, even we can run the OS operating system on top of the GPU, right? It's not that it's not that easy to use the CPU, but still it's possible. Uh, mainly because that there are some dedicated language CUDA uh, that can allow you to utilizing this uh, GPU to support your uh, to support this arbitrary set of language. So that's one of the direction we actually have this many parallel core. Also, we allow this some of this uh, programming this flexibility so that we can support the. Uh, or this kind of fixed random pipeline, or also general random pipeline, or even the general uh, general operations. It's a kind of zoom in view here. You can see that is the uh, there actually the uh, if you zoom in here, the you can see that this green one actually is every single core. It's a, it's not like the uh, CPU core. It's a very tiny core. It take it only support the uh, uh, some of the basic operation like the matrix vector operation. So if uh, here actually there is a uh, some of the uh, Intel Core i7 processor, the chip area, you can see that there are only four core, one, two, three, four core. But each core is kind of takes a lot of space in the this uh, chip area, right? But the, here this core is a, a, a much more powerful than the uh, the GPU core here, since uh, 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 basically if you took the, this architecture, actually there are a lot of the operations like the uh, kind of the branch prediction and and so on, right? So actually, the, this kind of the core in the CPU designed to support the, the general the, uh, language itself, right? That's why it actually had a much more complicated operation. On the other hand, uh, this, uh, this uh, GPU core is much more the lightweight, uh, mainly designed for support the, this uh, uh, matrix vector, matrix vector operation that, that are actually very closely related to the transformations. Also support the, a little bit of the, this uh, some of the, this uh, uh, flexible language. Obviously, at this at this time step, actually, at, uh, right now, actually, the, uh, we cannot run the arbitrary the general program that they can run on the CPU on the, the GPU. I mean, there are some of uh, 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 there's still there's still some of the limitations actually on the, the GPU side. So that's why actually CPU core is much more it takes much more space. But instead of having the main the uh, main difference is that over the CPU is that Instead of having this kind of very powerful core, we actually break it into small core, but we actually have many, many, um, uh, 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 many more distort small core so that we can achieve the better parallelism. That's the uh, main design decision that we had for the design GPU. Okay, so if I talked about the rendering pipeline, and then I mentioned that a lot of steps actually we need to deal with the transformation, which uh, in a way we need to do the matrix vector operations. That's why GPU evolved to support the kind of matrix vector in a parallel way. And then uh, I will talk about some of the basic operator, the dot product, cross product, that we need to do the, uh, uh, the some other this op op uh, 3D operation, 3D rotation and uh, that kind of approach. So these are actually given two vectors. We can think about it. You know that the dot product between two vectors, right? This actually matrix representation. Uh, but much more important is that uh, concept is that this geometric interpretation of the dot product. 
uh, so uh, you know the actually between two vector, the product between two vector is the uh, magnitude A vector and magnitude B, so there should be the, the, the uh, vector annotation here. We need to multiply their, uh, their magnitude uh, or with the discourse sign theta. Theta is the nothing but their uh, angle between them, right? The theta is the angle between them, right? But the uh, geometric interpretation is that, well, of course, the A vector is kind of normalized the, uh, unit vector. So if we perform the, actually the, the dot product here, uh, then uh, the magnitude of A, we assume that the magnitude of A is the one. So I assume that A is, uh, is a unit vector. Then this turn out to be the magnitude of B vector cosine theta, right? Then the B, the magnitude of B vector is nothing but the length, right? And then we, if we take the cosine theta, then it will be the, we actually compute this angle, right? The, this actually, the dot product between two represents the, this, this, this length, right? In other words, uh, we basically the project this vector on top of the, this A vector, then the dot product between a, two vectors, assuming the A is unit vector, so if, if the, it's the project length, uh, project length of this vector or uh, onto the, this A vector, right? That's the uh, main uh, geometric interpretation. This is also the same uh, interpretation in the case of the, uh, if we treat that the, uh, B is the actually point. <clears throat> that's actually the projection of the one vector to the another one in the length. It's the, uh, that's a, a main uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, important concept of that product. Cross product. Uh, this is actually the uh, between two uh, vector. We can do the cross product. This is actually matrix representation. But there, uh, this actually a little bit much more uh, easier. The geometric interpretation. So basically the. Uh, if we if we perform the cross product between A and B in the right hand rule, you actually the, you wrap the starting uh, you wrap the two vector from A to the B, then the this, uh, the result of this cross product, uh, basically the sum will represent the this the, the result of the, this cross product here. So basically the uh, uh, the cross product between two vector uh, it turn out to be the also one to the two input vector here. If you wrap the A and B, the sum will represent the, the product, cross product between two vectors. And obviously, the, uh, it's a little bit complicated to remember here, but the, this kind of the, uh, mnemonic device for remembering the cross product, say, uh, 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 basically, you might, some of you may know this one. If you do the cross product between two, two, uh, two vectors, you can write the one vector here, AX, AY, AG. B x b y b g the b b vector you can treat the i j k uh, uh, with uh, this uh, canonical vector then uh, basically the this component you can treat the this component you said you take it out uh, this column and then you do the you think about x shape uh, in other words you multiply a y b g a y b g and minus the, the other shape the minus a g a g and b y with the i vector. And then for the, the second one, you, you move to the, the second column, and then uh, here, J, and then you also draw the, this around X, X shape here. Uh, here, nothing just, you need to copy this one to here, A, G, B, X, A, G, B, X, minus A, X, uh, B, G. You, you can keep doing that, this process. Then you will know that actually you can perform the, this cross product between the here. Okay, so now uh, let me talk about this modeling transformation. So a lot of cases actually, a lot of, uh, when you actually do the uh, animation uh, one, we need, to do, we need to transform the certain the, uh, object, define the modern space into the world, right? That's the modeling transformation. A lot of cases, we need to do this modeling transformation. And they, uh, uh, basically, the understanding this modeling transformation fall into one of the two, two cases, right? That we already talked about here, right? So uh, some of the, uh, some uh, some coordinate defined in each own modeling coordinate, we actually multiply the uh, perform the modeling uh, uh, modeling transformation. Then you can think that actually we apply the, this uh, matrix M to the, the C, right? In, uh, then obviously we actually we compute the coordinate in each own the modeling coordinate, right? But the other one is that uh, the other concept is that from here when you do the uh, modeling transformation, we actually maintain the coordinate, but we change the, this uh, this coordinate. So uh, this could be the actually the uh, we in a way this is the actually the we we compute the, this coordinate defined uh, uh, we compute the coordinate of the model in the world space actually. Uh, let me just show that uh, uh, here I'd like to uh, I'd like to actually back up more here. 
why there, uh, why this modern transformation is very common here. I will show you some of video here. It's kind of old video, but uh, still actually this, uh, you can see that the body is there to fit many modern uh, transformations. If there are some of the trailer of the some of the game, I hope that you can see this one. So there could be actually there. Uh, uh, I hope you can see that there are a lot of the, the objects here. I, I, I don't know some of the characters doing some sort of the push and pull. And you can see that there are a lot of objects. And then we actually change our camera, but also we also, the, we also the move around the each the character of the, uh, uh, a lot of the surrounding objects, right? So do that, we need to do a lot of the, we need to transform each individual object to define this screen, right? That's why actually I mentioned that the modern transformation is one of the very, uh, a lot of cases that are uh, uh, modern transformation is very common actually. Yeah, so the, uh, they actually talked about the modern transformations. This is a 3D translation. Basically, there here uh, we, uh, <coughs> this is a translation. This is a rotation part is uh, part is actually identity matrix, and then only the tx, ty, tz this the uh, translation amount along x, y, z. You can treat that actually given this uh, modeling coordinate. We only translate object into that direction, or we can even in a uh, in an alternative view we actually uh, change the frame. Right? This is uh, this are two. Uh, two uh, equivalent uh, equivalent uh, equivalent interpretation, but much more complicated issue is that three D rota uh, three D rotation. So I will talk about this one. There could be the many different ways of the performing the three D rotation, but the uh, I briefly only briefly touch on cotton eye other one. But actually, the uh, I will explain the this rotation of the three D vector based on the this affine frame, the frame concept that we talked about last time. So put here, uh, uh, here I want this actual input vector. I want to rotate it. I want to rotate this vector along the this a vector, this rotation vector a. Here, this actual rotation angle. I want to rotate this vector something like that direction or right uh, in, in that direction as an amount of theta. So this actually a hat is a rotation axis. I use this hat to denote that this actually unit vector normalized vector, right? And uh, then uh, there could be a different way, but one of the approach that I, I will talk about is that we can utilize the concept of frame. So here, I will actually the, I will I will think about it some sort of the uh, frame that are also around each other. Other here yeah, we can treat this x some of the frames that people x vector, another y vector, g vector, something like that. Once we define the this its own local frame, x y g vector. They're rotating the rotating the x vector along the, this x axis. You know that, right? We we are it's very calm, it's very easy to rotating some vector along the canonical x direction, y direction, z direction, right? So to I, I want to apply that concept here. So the, the, the question is that obviously the, this vector is a, it's not a, the, the canonical frame, right? So then the issue is how we can actually the, how we can approach the, this the, uh, one based on the, the frame concept that we talked about before. First of all, uh, given this rotation vector, this input vector that we want to rotate, you can think about it another another direction here, right? How can you do that? So the we, before we talked about that product, first product, right? Uh, I want to compute this green vector that are also one to the each two vector, right? So that, that way we can compute this frame that are also one to each other, right? So then obviously then when I talk the perpendicular uh, perpendicular to the input vector, you need to think about it, you need to you need to able to come up with this uh, Cross product, right? If we do the cross cross product uh, by the uh, <coughs> graphing a vector x vector, then this sum will indicate the end result, right? This cross product between a and x. Then how can you compute this x vector? This one, right? There could be many different way actually, but one of is that uh, we can sum out the project. Or this uh, basically the this vector nothing but this in the this vector should be in the uh, the plane. Uh, plane span a uh, plane that uh, where the two vectors actually live in, right? But uh, this vector nothing but given this vector, we actually we cancel out the this the, uh, cancel out the, the component along the this a vector, right? If we take it out the 
uh, uh, amount of the, the, the magnitude along the uh, magnitude of this vector along the, this one, if you cancel it out, then it will be collapsing down into the here, right? That's actually how we compute the, uh, that, that vector. I will actually show uh, here. Mm. I will say that this is x or so on, right? It's perpendicular component of this x vector relative to the, this, the, uh, the rotation axis. Uh, that's our definition here. Uh, that could be very different one, but I will only focus on the this, uh, uh, underlined one. Given a vector, we, we do the cross product, we can compute this one. And for this one, actually, we need to, we need to look at the, this component here. First of all, I need to uh, I need to compute the, this, uh, the magnitude of the, this vector along the, this a, a direction, right? How can you do that? So we, to, to know the, this, the, uh, amount, uh, the magnitude along the a vector, then we need to project this vector, x vector, to the a vector, right? We need to project, we need to, uh, we need to project this, the, this vector into the, along the a direction, right? Then what operation you can think of? The dot product, right? If we pro uh, if we uh, if we perform the x vector along the a vector here, uh, with the other way, it doesn't matter. Then we can compute the, the magnitude, the project's magnitude of this a vector along the this the a, right? By definition of dark product, right? And then if we uh, we only know the magnitude of this one along the here along the a vector, then it will be the represented uh, the vector along that direction, right? Up to the here. Uh, whose magnitude along the a vector same to the, the, this one, right? And then, if we uh, then this component is the x parallel. We define an x parallel component. Then, if we take it out this x parallel component from the x, in other words, we uh, we actually cancel out this component. Then it will push down to here, right? Then it will be the x or so on a component to the a and uh, uh, here. Then that way we computed these three different basic vector that are also to each other. So the here there could be the other one. I will just skip this one. I can uh, uh, I will uh, I will skip this one. Actually, there is a little more complete. Uh, actually, I uh, uh, I uh, I handle this slide to explain the another concept here and there. But you don't need to worry about here. I'm not going to come up with. I'm not going to give make any the midterm exam along the uh, on the part that I did uh, I didn't I I didn't uh, I I didn't uh, the explain here. But the main reason why I maintain this slide here and there is that for those of you, for, uh, for those of you who watched this YouTube video, right, you know that actually there, I mentioned I'm not going to make a question here, right? Then I hope that if you watch this, I hope that you can actually the gain, uh, gain some benefit. So you don't need to worry about this component, uh, other than other than this, uh, the way of computing this component. Uh, here, I will actually the. Uh, so far, I, will, I, I talked about actually the, I, uh, given this A vector rotation axis, I computed this vector green, uh, 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 now uh, I will rename it B vector, it's another S octagonal vector, given this input vector, right? Then uh, I mentioned that this actually is three, uh, three different, uh, this orthogonal ba uh, basis function, right? Then we can, define the, we can define this vector within this local coordinate, right? In other words, uh, we define this frame. A vector uh, here actually I said that A somehow there I used there this, uh, for the frame I used the uh, x, uh, x x x vector y vector g axis of the origin right and then for x I used A vector uh, for y I used this vector for g I used this vector origin is not really matter but I just keep that the, I just introduced the virtual this all the origin of all, all that and then. Um, this vector actually, the, uh, this one uh, has the, this the, uh, certain coordinate, coordinate along the this uh, this vector and that vector, that vector here, right? Then for this one, what other what other for this one, what other coordinate of this vector along the this the, uh, red vector? How can you do that? You also need to project this vector to here, right? It means you need to dot product between this vector and that vector, right? By doing that, we can compute the coordinate of this one, this x vector along the a vector. Let's say this S, and all uh, for the Y, uh, this direction also we can compute, we do the same uh, process, we can compute the, the coordinate, let's say T. For the this fact, we know that uh, that should be under, uh, uh, we know that that component doesn't have the, this component, right? That should be zero, and then we just keep it as a one. Uh, I just here, I just treat that this, uh, this, uh, this one as a point. So given this one, then why I set up this one then, Rotate uh, here. I want 
initially I want to rotate this vector along the, the rotation back, uh, uh, rotation axis, which could be the arbitrary vector in the 3D space, right? But within this 3D local frame, the rotation here is nothing but just the rotating the uh, rotation along the this the canonical frame, the x direction, right? You can very easily think about it as the uh, rotation uh, rotation uh, vector uh, as an amount of set along the x, right? Then if you do that, uh, then uh, basically you, you rotate it, the, this vector along the here x direction, and this will be the uh, this you can compute the, this can give us the uh, the co uh, coordinate of the rotated vector, and basically for this one, uh, let's say that what other what are the rotation uh, rotation vector along the x axis, then the, if you rotate it along the x axis x axis does not change, right? Then think about it, this is actually the let's say this is actually x vector and x and y and g. If you rotate it along the this direction, right? Then there will be the x should be does not change, right? Uh, I need to read uh, x x should be the unchanged, right? This could be the zero zero, right? And then y vector should be rotated, right? Y and g. Then you can just use using the 2D coordinate. Uh, it could be the uh, cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. I may not remember exactly, but we can just, uh, you can treat the distance with just canonical x, y, g, and then if you just uh, canonical rotation matrix, there will, there will be no, maybe the rotation matrix there will run in 2D, you can apply to there. Then, this is actually the rotation matrix that we talked about here, actually. X, x, along the x axis, but not, uh, x axis, but not change, right? That's why I have one. Uh, y, G should be the chain here. So that's why actually I have uh, this common regular rotation matrix here. I'll, I'll plot here to there, then you can compute the, uh, this one. But the, uh, here, uh, if we multiply the, this matrix to there, then we compute the coordinate of the, the, the vector along the, this local frame, right? If you want to know the, the, the coordinate in the uh, Euclidean space, our common the, uh, world space, which is the Euclidean space, then, in other words, then equal to our canonical frame with the Euclidean can, uh, Euclidean frame is the zero one one one. Uh, and one something like that, right? And then uh, this is our the, uh, the coordinate that we actually the want to carry, right? If you actually do the, this one, in other words, uh, it's nothing but to cancel out, right? Then you can multiply this back a matrix here. And then here you will get the coordinate in the in the common world coordinate defined in the, this canonical kind of frame. That's why I talked about the, uh, this approach. Okay, uh, this could be a little bit a little bit complicated in, uh, initial time, but actually the once we had a full understanding under this local frame, then basically the local uh, once we define the local uh, local frame, some of the rotation along the, this canonical the, this local axis is very easy, right? Uh, since we can we can use the this uh, I already erased it, the canonical rotation along the x, y, and g. That is the not 3D in the end. That's the kind of the 2D rotation that we talked about before, right? Then you can apply this uh, that concept here. Then based on uh, this uh, fine frame, you can change the coordinate here uh, in one frame into another coordinate. So that's the main benefit. I wish that you take some time uh, and then to fully understand this. Uh, there will be there some questions. Uh, to check the whether you fully understand this uh, this concept. Uh, that's why actually I have another approach to explain this concept rotation, but that's why I, I'm not going to talk about this one. It's much more complicated, but I think that uh, basically you can utilize the, the, your, the, uh, uh, the concept that you learned in high school to do that, but I'm not, uh, I'm not going to uh, teach this one. Okay, so another approach for the rotation is that also another one is cotton ion. Cotton ion is the uh, this concept is that given this rotation uh, vector v, uh, I want to rotate a certain point along the, this uh, along the, this the rotation axis as an amount of t, right? That's also the uh, uh, different way of the real, uh, performing the rotation, uh, the cotton ion. Uh, but actually, the, I'm not going to talk about the low level details here in this class. I will uh, I will uh, I mainly talk about the, the rotation based on this affine frame. But if you're interested, uh, if you're interested under this cotton ion, you can study more here. I'll just skip this one. 
means that I, uh, uh, skipping this slide means that I'm not going to make the, the, the uh, question on the, uh, in the midterm to, uh, uh, about this material. But the important is that actually there are a lot, some of the advantages of cotton iron over the using the, this co the rotation metric that we talked about here. So uh, overall here, we, uh, when we talk about here, this section 4 by it and it give us the 4 by 4 rotation metrics in the uh, world space, right? That's why uh, I say that uh, uh, cotton iron actually has a benefit over the, this common rotation matrix here. The cotton iron actually is, uh, you know, it's very compact. Uh, I didn't really talk about this uh, detailed concept, but it requires only the vector, 3D vector, right? It consists of the, the three components, right? Along the, the uh, amount of rotation, let's say T. Then there are only four different uh, quantity, right? Uh, obviously, 4 by 4, uh, 4 by 4 matrix is that st uh, storing 4 by 4 matrix requires 16 elements, right? But as you can see, the, uh, uh, the using cotton line is much more, also the, uh, uh, it requires less storage, also the, it is uh, more efficient than just using the, this uh, 4 by 4 matrix. Also, there are some of the numerical benefits. Uh, I, I didn't really talk, I, I don't want to talk about all those issues, but I'd like to point out that cotton, cotton iron has a certain benefit, more efficient, less storage, also it can be the numerically more stable. And th those are the, uh, 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 actually the, I wish that you can, uh, I wish you know that it's about the cotton iron. And then if you want to know more, I recommend you, uh, recommend you to Google the, this about the, the cotton iron. Okay. Uh, that's it. So uh, probably you already saw the respect of the PA2. It's a uh, sim simple animation and transformation here. Uh, let me just uh, uh, the run this the, uh, PA2. So here I just uh, we can just uh, uh, rotate this object right he here uh, for this of. Uh, here, uh, basically, I rotated this uh, some of the object along the uh, some of the uh, here. This I get this rotation rotation vector here. Here, you, you just need to implement rotation along that that one. That could be the if you look at the spec, you can see the detailed one. But these are the actually some of the, the uh, requirement that you need to implement for the PA two. So basically, there, we know that some of the rotation matrix here, 3D rotation matrix, you uh, you need to understand that concept, or you need to be able to apply the, that concept here. And then, uh, but if you look at the skeleton code of PA2, you also use you use actually display list, display list. So I'd like to briefly talk about this uh, display list concept. It's the kind of the open group of OpenGL command stored for later execution. So basically, there, uh, once you store some of operation, you can optimize, right? So it can be optimized in the graphics hardware so that you, you can get a, a better performance uh, here. And then, but also there are many other advanced techniques. Uh, basically, there, in uh, some of the recent OpenGL uh, one, you can use the vertex array object. It should be better, but using it a little bit more complicated. So that's why we use just a simple one, the display list. So, uh, but compared to the display list, before actually, the, when you call the GL begin and end, that's the immediate mode. We just, uh, at that, when you call the GL begin and end, we just uh, sending that information, specify the GL vertex from the CPU to the GPU. We just immediately send the data to the, uh, uh, to the GPU, right? That's why we have named of immediate mode. And also basically, the, we, uh, every time we, you call the GL begin and end, GL vertex, we send the information from CPU to GPU require some of the communication. That's why it is uh, 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 a little more slow. But the display list is that we actually, the, uh, we, we actually the wrap the, this GL begin and end. We send the, all those information uh, uh, at the beginning of the running our application from CPU to GPU, and then we keep utilizing the information stored in the GPU. That way, we can, use, we can achieve the better, better runtime performance while using the, some of the memory space in the uh, GPU side. And using it's very simple. So basically, they're here. To uh, use the, the display list, first of all, you need to generate it. That's a GL gen list. Uh, I, I, I don't remember what one means, but we're just generating the, the uh, one list or the image ID. If you want to know more about this one, I recommend you to, to Google it, this one. And then uh, we, uh, we actually, there, I think that this is the number of the uh, list. list. 
So you got the ID, right? And then we generate a new list here. Here, uh, you start with the GL new list and end uh, uh, end the list here. In between, we call the draw function here, and then in this draw function, we might use the GL and begin end. But whatever you do here, we actually make it. Uh, we actually uh, we we wrap the those group of OpenGL command, and then we somehow cache. We actually compile it. We we actually send it to the GPU in one time, and then. Every time when you want to use it, then you just need to call a uh, GL call list. Then we just start using the information stored in the GPU under the, this list. So that actually we can, we don't need to send the data, data from the CPU and GPU every time when you call this function. That's why we can actually accelerate the rendering performance. Again, GL generate a list here. Oh, you will actually explain the, this, the, the parameter. Uh, here, GL new and n and call, that's it. And also, there's sometimes you want to know the, uh, you want to get the information from OpenGL, right? Sometimes, actually, if you want to know the how many bits, if you are used for the web channel, you need, you need to call this function, GL get integer uh, value under the thumb of the this flag, and then you need to get some output, right? And then you actually pass down the variable of the address of this variable. You'll get the answer here. Uh, uh, basically, the, that's the uh, if you look at the uh, PA2, you may get the, this kind of the uh, API. Uh, that's why I actually uh, I briefly explain this con uh, this API. Also, you can also uh, here GL get double value. Uh, you can even get the uh, here uh, in the OpenGL we do a lot of modeling and the viewing transformation. I didn't really talk about viewing transformation yet, but the, uh, even you can ask the OpenGL to get the matrix representation uh, about the model and view. Uh, uh, this modeling and viewing combined together in a, a one matrix, right? We actually ask the OpenGL to get the information and store the information into this, this variable. And once we know that, we probably we may use this information in the PA2. Yeah. So I recommend you, uh, recommend you to know the uh, uh, spec of PA2, which should be in the available at the KLMS also course on page. And then, you know, the, uh, uh, basically, the, uh, obviously, PA2 is the uh, uh, it's uh, a little more the difficult than co compared to PA1, so I recommend you to start all this. So by now, I wish that you know the you you, you know that you knew you can understand the classic data processing, uh, nothing but render pipeline. Over there, we using a lot of the, the modeling transformation. So along that line, we talked about 3D translation, but much more important one is the rotation concept. Uh, we may talk about the rotation based on the affine transformation. We didn't really talk about some other approach, uh, also this, or we didn't really talk about this cotton iron. And then the regular homeworks, uh, go over the uh, next lecture video, watching, uh, watch the figure of the ratio video, some it, uh, some each extract, uh, a summary before the Monday class every week. Next time we'll talk about doing transformation. That's it. Thank you. Bye.